it's not directly only http i have explained it to you multiple times without a, how can we run app without a dependency and how can you run a dependency without a root file system getting your points so when i say one two you get a root file system but when i say http that means let me track in front of you so you'll be having little bit more comfort so this is the image of httpd okay now see here these all are flavors so you want to use whichever the way you want it you can do that now you want to trace these are the platforms okay uh, typically we use amd platform but you can go for the any other platforms also now you say rajesh i want to know which particular e e image which is httpd or based on what it's no problem you can trace it i, I will teach you anyways that's a part of the session but just for this see this is based on debian okay okay so here now let's say rajesh i don't want a debian i want uh, ubuntu or uh, so i want centos no problem take a ubuntu a centos image and build on top of that uh, http d simple how much time 4 minutes 3 minutes or more not more than that so take a this image this is the image and on top of that you add http d manually i'll teach you how to, how can you do that are you understanding yeah I'm so yes thinking. all the tools you will get it here now your desired combination you may get it you may not get it i don't know you have to search for it but it takes one hour adding a creating an image custom image just take 5 minutes makes sense right but but in that case uh, most of the time we will just go to the uh, maybe like uh, base uh, version of ubuntu right Be because no, no, the desired no, no. combination uh, is on again your focus see your focus should be on applications not on the runtime environment see you want jenkins to be used not you don't want uh, for time being i'm just telling you let's say uh, one sessions next to next week we'll have a jenkins so you just bother about jenkins how to learn jenkins so you just want jenkins whether jenkins is running on centos debian fedora suji what exactly i don't care about it now if someone will ask me hey rajesh there is a project jenkins is running on the some certain platform only and you need to be pro in that then i'll think about it but let's first learn the jenkins now applications correct yeah. ma yeah okay so guys and now life uh, life cycle of container any other questions before before getting me getting into this any other questions guys hello doctor hello may yes please, please tell me i can hear you hello i can hear you uh, we run can we run docker docker engine and docker client in different machines ram uh, i am having uh, some problem with the hearing you probably you have asked can i run the docker client and docker uh, what what is said i i uh, docker demon in this docker engine in different engine in different machines yeah i repeat i repeat like a controller controller and node c c c look at this here docker engine is equal to client and docker d and they talk, communicate through the api so of course you can have it in a different machines yes this can you can have a docker client here docker d in another machines so now questions to you back to questions to you so let's say this is a this is in one machine this is a machine two container will be creating the machine one or machine two tell me machine one machine one No, 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 no. Please think. My my question is: Docker client is running in machine one. Docker D is running in machine two. You are sending a, a communication from machine one to machine two. So container will be running in machine one or machine two? Container machine on top of Docker D uh, on uh, correct on machine correct. two. Machine yeah. two. Remember that But, Docker D only talk to the local kernel. If there is no, I I did not never I never said here they talk through API and no. all. They they all talk to UDP actually. Okay, so, so this all has to be the same to machine. Run the container. Yes. In same. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Yes. Got it. Okay. Any other questions, guys? Okay. Now, guys, I must ask you to focus. Very important session. And let me tell you, you are all of your struggle of containers. and dockers will be disappeared in the next one hour only okay do need to get scared from the latest technology because latest technology is always easy to learn easy to test easy to debug easy to share 
and all. So it's like that. So now the question is life cycle of container. Let me a little, let me ask you simple way to just for your memory context. Okay, life cycle of human. You you know that anyone would like to tell me life cycle of human? Anyone? So we born right, and then we become a kid. It's life cycle phases. Uh, kid, then we become young. A teen first, maybe teen, and then we become young, and then we become mid, middle age, then old, and then die. Correct, no? Something like that. Now, next question is life cycle of VMs. Tell me, because VMs technology we are using from last fifteen plus years. So at least you should tell me here, VMs, so I can teach you the containers. So we create a VM. Uh, guys, how many of you have created a VM in the last session? We are having five days gap. So how many of you have created a VMs? Yeah, I created, sent, and always. Wonderful. Guys, please practice it. It is important. Otherwise, this whole sessions will be wasted. Okay, so here you have to create a VM. Then you start a VM. If you started, you can stop or stop, of course. If you stop, you can start again back. If you started, then you can also restart also, right? If it's restarted, if it's running, then you can pause the VM. If it is paused, you can unpause the VM. If can unpause again, it will be running. Then you can kill the VM. And then if it's still, then you can remove the VM. Are you okay with this workflow? Of the VM life cycle of the uh, uh, VMs, all of you. Yes. Yeah. So, guys, I think you know the containers also. Look at this here. Yes, you need to create a container. You need to start the container. You need to stop the container. You need to start again back to the container. You can restart the container. You can pause the container. You can unpause the container. You can kill the container. You can remove the container. Okay. So you can do that. So how do we do that? Demo directly. Guys, how do I know which are the images I'm having? Docker images, none. How do I know how many containers are running? Docker ps, none. How do I know how many containers are exited and running? A, all. Only you need to remember these three commands: Docker images, Docker ps, Docker ps hyphen A. And I have no images. I have no container running. I have no container exited. Also, you see that. So what do we do in this case? Let's work with the image which is called HTTPD. Okay, so this is a simple image, HTTPD, web server. <clears throat> All images are simple only, by the way. So here, how do we get this? Here you have a command actually, Docker pull HTTPD. So Docker pull HTTPD and enter. It will take because it AWS, it's just uh, fast. It will take hardly a few seconds. If you are doing in the local machines, probably it will take a few minutes. Okay, because of the internet speed. So now you see that here, guys. Look at my screen. All of you see my screen, right? Yes, yes, we can see. So, guys, yes. this is the image. Image name HTTPD tag with the latest image ID ten days back. It got created and size of this one. By the way, if you look at this image name, is repository. Remember, it come. It is repository. Image is repository. Con uh, image con repository contains images. File system. Please understand that. Okay. Now, I don't know how many of you have noticed that. If you know, if you know Git, probably you'll understand this one easy. I told you image is equal to multiple version of file system. Are you all remembering that statement? Correct. Yes. Yeah. One pulling, two pulling, three pulling, four pulling, five pulling. That means it has a five version of file system in this image. You can check this out, but I'm not talking right now. Don't want to confuse you. <coughs> Okay, so now I got an image. I got an image. How do I create a container? Simple, guys. Please remember this workflow life cycle all the time. Don't need to remember anything else. Please remember this all life cycle. So can I can I run it in front of you? Docker create what from which image? HTTPD. See here. Look at the status created. So every time you create a container, you get a unique ID from image. Container is running with this. Will run with this. Right now it's not running. 
is not running status is created only and uh, the name of the container is uh, randomly generated so it's like that so i created one container one more. you want one more two container see here you want one more three container how much time it takes to create a container guys are you seeing that second correct now all of you yes sir. can i start now next life cycle see that i need i can use the container name i can use the container id anything is okay i'm using container id container name is unique container id is also unique start look at this up one more start look at the match here see up one more so two up one created status now i'll stop it one continue stop first continue see the container which is stopped after running exit the container which has never run created the container which is running up can i start one more time stop the container start see you running one two seconds what to do now see create start stop start restart so there's one container middle one which is running from last 39 seconds see here one second tell me is it effort you are putting some effort no is so magically is happening everything what do you want pause so see here which container you want to pause let's say this one so docker pause container id see here. look at this pause pause container will not get a cpu i repeat pause container will not get a cpu ram will be used storage will be used but not a cpu okay and here unpause again running and then kill see i'm killing one container kill container id and see kill will also exit the container first one and then finally you can remove so only the exit container or created container you can remove it the container which is running you cannot remove it because the process is in hold lock so remove rm and the container id enter and you see here gone so tell me tell me honestly was it really difficult to run application which is apache using docker all of you tell me yes. are you understanding yes yes wonderful so now guys next thing next thing i am having in my mind okay fine i created a container but how do i use it how do i access it correct okay. how this is the next question how do i use it so guys let me ask you in one very simple question when you run a vm what you do with the vm tell me honestly let's say you create a container or uh, sorry vms on aws or let's let's say you create a vm in your what in your uh, laptop itself how do you use it what do you do with the, that vm tell me try to access that go inside it and then second one run commands yeah you go inside run commands and second one access from outside from accessing outside what do you need correct na yeah work network network correct na yeah 
that's all so why you are taking so seriously the container container is not something out of the world thing it is the same environment without a boot file system without a kernel it's the same environment is you can you, there's no difference between you and container the only things you when you log in to the laptop you are you all are sharing the resources in a container they are not sharing the resources they are independent they are lucky actually kernel is given separate separate resources for every container but you guys are getting shared resources that's a difference apart from that there is no difference don't take container very seriously so the question is how do i go inside the container and how can i access that container from outside that's the question we should answer so before me answering this question do you have any questions for me do you have any questions for me yeah i am having a question uh, rajesh so uh, yes. when we pulled that uh, image so mm -hmm. uh, you have shown us that it has basically uh, pulled out all the previous versions yes that's correct so so is it is there any possibility that uh, we can also uh, create the containers based on some previous image yes very much you can do that very how much to do that how to do that that's that's a, that's a upcoming topic i'll i'll do that but think about it very simple you know git yeah so git you are checking out the latest one and then you get a source code of latest one when you check at the older one don't you get the older check, older source code same way and now you you last rajesh why you are adding git when i am asking questions of docker <laughs> correct now so let me tell yeah. you here. so again here i am basically looking at the, what are the options to basically point to uh, previous image so again no, the I, checkout process uh, how to do that checkout process in uh, uh, docker that uh, i am i am basically huh. confused that about. that i'll teach you Fun uh, theoretically you understand uh, the uh, the uh, how to do that i'll i'll tell you that's a part of the session so now okay, okay. why i am asking you to remember all that i have whenever you ask me a docker question you know what uh, sorry a docker image question then i will not talk about the docker, uh, git image uh, sorry git repo why why because there is a reason for it and the reason is the docker image is maintained by sha256 algorithm and git repository which is also kind of image itself is maintained by sha1 algorithm they are from the something similar pa parents algorithms are same so any concept which apply to git repository for versioning the same concept will apply to docker image repository also so that's the reason i'm saying anything which you have a question in terms of images docker images find out that answer in a git one and you will get an in, uh, answer now you will say rajas how to do that that's a you'll have to little bit wait for it make okay. sense yeah okay so any other questions guys okay so guys look at my screen just a second guys give me just i'm having some water Can we have a ten-minute break now? Maybe after the uh, ten-minute break, we can start. Yes, if all are okay, then we can have it. What about other people? Can we have a one break for ten minutes only? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so guys, only ten minutes of break. Don't uh, delay because we have a lot of things to cover today only. So yeah. I'll be back in ten minutes, and you guys also grab your tea, coffee, rest, and personal calls. Yeah, thank you. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so next question is, how do I go inside a VM? How, how can I access the VM from outside? Or how can I go inside a container? And how can I access the container from outside? Simple. So guys, how do you go inside a <clears throat> VM? So typically, you use SSH. Correct now? And how 
you can access some outside network. Okay, for SSH also you need a network, but here SSH HTTP. Correct now, all of you agree with me? Using network yes. and using network. Now here, because it's a console, console access you can get it of shell access. Shell access, console I think is right, not right word, sorry. Shell access. Uh, uh, for uh, Linux, which shell we use? Bash. For Windows, what shell we use? Anyone? For, uh, for Windows, which shell we use? PowerShell. PowerShell, yes, wonderful. Guys, uh, come out of this scene, which is called console. Like, we got uh, used to it so much, the Windows. Like, without uh, console, we don't work at But try to get a habit of shell or browser. That is the best. Okay, so how do I use the container? Before that, guys, I must uh, uh, share with you one of the knowledge and which is very important for you. And again, I must tell you, this is so important, like you cannot troubleshoot if you forget this rule. You cannot troubleshoot Docker if you forget the rule. If you cannot troubleshoot the container, you see forget the rule. What is the rule? I'll put it in the context, you'll remember that. You know what, physical server, Physical server is running as long as the ID one is running. Yes, that's correct. The ID one is running. Now, PID one means first process. First process. Okay. PID one is running. So let me show you here. Uh, where is my task manager in this Windows? This is my physical machine, right? Windows machine. Uh, let me close this. Where is my task manager? Here it is. So, guys, look at this. I told you everything start from zero, and then followed by one, two, three. So one, two, three. I see that's got disappeared, but four you see that. And four, what is this? Can you can you look at this four? What is that? Look at this. This is a four. What you are running? Understood now? Yes. Sir. So your system, your Windows machine is running because of this, this, because of this. If you kill this process for PID somehow, you know what? Your system will shut down. But then you will ask Rajesh, you said PID one. Why did you say PID one? Good. Here is a PID four. Windows architecture little different, you know, little different. So they are running with a four PID. So that means two, one, two, three. They have used. They have run something else and then cleared it off. But in Linux, it's you. You see that. Let me go to Linux. Uh, this is the Linux machines, okay? CentOS machines. And I would like to show you here. Go top. See here zero. And then one, and you see this is a system. Correct now. So if you kill this process PID one, your VMs will be stopped or virtual machines will be stopped. Make sense, guys, all of you? Yes, yeah. You. yeah. Please remember this. Physical server is running because of PID one is running. Virtual server is running because of PID one is running. So I think container is different. Remember that container is running, is running as long as PID one is running. Okay. So can I give you these clarifications? Let me show you. So guys, look at my screen here. And here, see guys, this is the look, look at my screen. I'm assuming you are very comfortable with the commands of Linux, so PS hyphen is this is the process table of my base machine, host machine, VM. Now, can I show you this containers PID? So for that, you know what? Docker execute into what container? This container and PS hyphen EF. See, this PF hyphen EF, I run in a host machine, and you saw that, and I'm running the container. Now this error. Why this error? Because this command line utility you don't have in a container of HTTP. No problem. I will use another container. Quickly, I'll create it. 
Okay, don't worry about the commands. I'm creating another container which has a ps hyphen ps utility exist, and that is I'll show you this. Just hold. I created another container. Look at my screen, all of you. This container, I know that ps utility is there. So sometimes what happens that when you create application, you remove all unwanted executables and only keep it the one which is required for running applications. Okay, so Docker exec and this container and ps hyphen ex. See here, starting with zero or what? Tell me. Starting with zero, correct now? Container inside starting with zero and which is running a container right now? PID one. So as long as this PID one is running, container is running. The moment you kill this container, PID one, container will stop. Make sense, all of you? Yes. All of you? Now I told you container also get one MNT. Let let me get you use this opportunity. To, let me show you. Kh. See here. This is inside a container. Don't don't. Uh, this is my host machine. If you if you want to see that, see the my host machine. And uh, this is the container. Inside a container, you see the root file system. Let me show you your root file system. Exact ls root. See here. And here ls. This is the system command. See. Host machine also have a root file system. Inside a container also have a root file system. Let me tell you, these are the different file system. Different root file system. Now I said one mount get attached to that. So df hyphen ph. Look at this here. Right now only one container is running. So this is your container file system. Okay. How many containers I'm having running? Only one like this. Now two. So if you have a two here, see two. Can I run one more container just for the sake of discussion? Look at my screen. This is the quickest way to run container. Don't think anything right now. I'll explain it to a little bit later. Yes. See three containers running. Now df hyphen three mounts are there. So this is for one container. This is for one another container. This is for one another. Container. So what I said, each container get a one route root file system. I showed you. See root file system. See each container get their own. Process table, see here, and each container they get own networking. Let me show you if networking tools are there or not. No, it's not there. If config is there, you can install it. It's not there. So the utility which is not there, it's not running. No, it's not there. Got it? All of you? Yes. Okay. So now the question was different. But I covered little bit. But 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 you must remember this concept. Your container is running as long as PID one is running. So can I show you this? Let me kill the PID one. Okay. So guys, I'm killing this PID one. So Docker PS, I, uh, Docker PS, and there's a container which is here. Okay. So Docker execute and this container and kill hyphen nine one. Not see. I said killing one will kill the container, but you did not kill it. Why? Why? So guys, tell me one thing. Suicide is allowed or not in in the world? It's running, so that's right. No, no, no. Running also you can kill, but suicide is not allowed. Okay. So here. Understand that in this case, what has happened? I don't want to get into too much of technical. What has happened? That this command when I run, it become a child. This command is child, and child is saying, "Hey, hey, this child command." Let me show you the child one. Uh, yes, I found. Yes, see here. This is the child. This whenever I run any command, it become a child. So like that, if I run this command, it's a become a child. Child is saying, "Hey, I'll kill my parent itself." Tell me, is it possible? Hello, everyone. If you would like to access the remaining videos of this playlist or 50 plus more tools which are coming under DevOps, DevSecOps, SRE, DataOps, GitOps, etc., kindly become our channel members by clicking on the joining button. You would have access to 100s of playlist and 1000s of videos lifetime access with this membership. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Want to study further? Join our training programs today.